All right, what's up, everybody? Today we're gonna be working on a sketch and drawing um, on a blank cover of this Action Comics. Lois Lane is the the subject. So let's get things rolling here, and we're starting off with the uh, the sketch that I have already done in pencil. I use a mechanical pencil to make my sketches, so that's all, all ready to go. And now we're applying the inks. Um, and the inks that I, I use are the Copic Multiliners. So those are my favorites to use when I'm doing this type of inking. And so far, those they're pretty much the only markers, or the only liners that work with uh, Copic markers because some of the other ones like micron pens they tend to smear when you go over them with with the Copics so um, I just tend to stick to the same brand that way you know we don't run into any problems later on with smearing and, and smudges and things like that so anyways here's a speed speed inking little segment there and you see here I'm just working my way around the the sketch now I'm getting the bottom part of her face and her chin area, her cheeks. Still using that 0.3 size. Now if I had my choice of, you know, just one size to use for the whole drawing, I would probably go with a 0.5. You can make a whole a whole drawing with just that size because you can vary the the thickness of your line just by tilting it, tilting your pen. But of course, it's easier if you have, you know, more sizes to work with. So, in this case, I'm using the 0.3 since I'm working in some of the more intricate areas of the drawing. You know what I'm saying? So, like if it was a more like maybe maybe in the hair or something or the clothing, or it's not so precise, I would probably switch over to the 0.5 size, but with the the markers when I put them in so now we're gonna go ahead and, and put in the colors and here is a light blue color and I'm using that for a rim light on the hair and even though right now it doesn't look like it's a light when I add in the darker tones on the hair it's gonna give the illusion of a lighter a lighter color like it's reflecting off the sky so okay so I got that blue tone in and we're gonna make our our base base light color if that makes sense so it's not the actual base tone of the hair but the the main light of the hair and what number is that Copic marker E 30 something E31 so I'm just filling it all in and I'm pretty sure I, I filled it all in and, and I didn't leave any kind of uh, white in the paper sometimes I will for like a, a real crisp highlight but in this case um, I didn't think it needed it so I'm just using the marker itself and these once again this is gonna be the lights of the hair so Okay, now we're switching over to a medium, medium tone, medium brownish tone. So I think this is going to be the base color of the hair. So like if you were just to pick one flat color to make the hair, this color would be it. And as you can see, the underneath tone is making the lights when I apply in the the darker color over it so that's why I didn't need to leave out that uh, that blank area of just white to show off the lights in the hair <clears throat> because this this brown is light enough as it is and then you don't want to get too light on the hair you know what I'm saying so you'll start looking a little bit crazy <laughs> alright now move over to the right side and fill in 
the areas where it needs it and leaving that lighter brown tone for the light part highlights and you'll notice I got both tips both caps of the marker off and the reason for that is because um I've been having issues with the the marker flooding like it'll you know spill onto the page where I'm coloring and, and uh, luckily I haven't ruined the whole drawing doing that but I've I've had that problem happen to me and it seems to happen with the more like deeper and richer colors so I think it has something to do with the pressure of the markers maybe it's the heat in Arizona that makes it do that so anyways if you're wondering why I got both caps off that's the reason so it lets out relieve some of that pressure <clears throat> and gives it a more even um, ink flow and as you can see I'm working in layers with these deeper tones so each each layer is a deeper and darker brownish color so you know just working in wherever it needs it and we'll still add in and add in even more darker tones so this is not the the darkest tone of the, of the brown hair that you'll see but for the most part it's you know like the the basic basic dark and just in the darkest darks is where I'm adding this this color right here this real dark brown color so maybe the next video I'll see if I can write down the numbers of the color that way you know if you decide to ever follow along or, or try these these same colors you'll know which ones I'm using but at the time of this recording I didn't think of it so like I said you know in the areas where it's has the deepest darks that's where I'm applying all the these marker tones and especially along that rim light you'll see where it I added some of that dark brown you know next to that blue color that's what gives gives it that illusion of a rim light or like a reflected light coming off the sky which in real life it really wouldn't be like that but you know it's illustration so again just adding in the colors in layers and so we're, we're getting really close to getting the structure of the skin tones down and um, you know I got most of the shading in so I'm going over it with the lightest color and blending the, the tones in a little bit more to get more smooth skin tones in. <clears throat> and so here I'm adding in the deepest, deepest and darkest shadow colors for the cast shadows and, um, you know, wherever it needs it to be the darkest, just sparingly where it, it needs it the most you know you don't want to overdo it with this one because then it'll start looking a little too weird just mostly in the cast shadows and then some of the deepest form shadows okay so now we're coloring in the lips and right now her face looks kind of crazy because you know she got the her eyes aren't colored in yet so she's looking really you know wild right there because the the eyes aren't filled in but you know it'll all start to come together and here I'm just giving her a more natural lip color instead of a super deep red like I normally do but I think in this case it works well kind of complements the neutral tones and, and her lighter brown hair And there I added in the basic blue for the eyes and 
here I grab my colored pencils for the first time and filling in the de details on the lips. I forgot the name of that color, but it's one of my favorite colors. And by the way, this brand Karan Diash is the, the main pencils that I use. Those are my favorite colored pencils. I do have a few other brands like Derwent and um, uh, what's the other one? Polychromos. And those are real nice too, but these are my favorite ones, the Karen Diash Pablos. You know, they're real smooth and vibrant, so those are the, uh, the color pencils I have the most of. Okay, moving back to the eyes and getting in some more details. Now the eyes are really starting to come together and stand out. A little bit more natural and adding in some of the cast shadow in the eyes so her eyes aren't so uh, stark looking and and uh, you know just makes it a little, little bit more natural looking and that's my favorite favorite tone to use on the eyes for the shadows this is this gray color by uh, color soft Derwent Color Soft. That's the brand of that pencil right there. That's why it's so small because I use it so much. And then just shadowing in some of that um, smoky, smoky tone on the eyes. Going back in and putting in some more eyelashes on her that would be her right eye so even though it's to our left that's her right eye just making them a little bit more thick and fuller adding in some eyeshadow again with the Karan Diash Pablo pencils they're real smooth and, and they work great for glazing over color like that and just adding a little a little bit more pressure makes it more vibrant and powerful the color so yeah really dig these pencils okay so now I'm grabbing a warm red like an orange red color and adding in some warm red tones to the skin so this is what I was talking about earlier, adding in color to the skin so it gives it more life, you know what I'm saying? So it's not just the browns and, and the the muted um, flesh tones. And also I'm using green. So for a couple of reasons. One is to cool down the warm tones and also to give it the appearance of of receding like to make the skin turning and um, it's kind of hard to explain you know when one day I'll probably do a tutorial on color temperature but adding in these green tones where the skin or the forms turn away from you um, really helps it and it gives it a nice compliment to the warm skin tones like I was saying and here I'm just filling in a little bit of color and that cast shadow on the neck. And I grabbed the darker, dark colored pencil here to add in some of the cast shadows on the skin that are um, a little bit smaller and finer in detail that would have been more difficult with just a marker. So you can see I use that one quite a bit too. I think that was a polychromos. And that's another thing to consider is, uh, you know, if you use markers, you know, absolutely consider getting yourself a, a, a set of nice artist quality color pencils because uh, 
you know they will definitely enhance your drawing with details so here I'm um, just filling in the colors of, of her eyeglasses and um, again using colored pencils is working out great because it, they can get into smaller areas like this or you know you can still do it with the marker but the pencils are are more precise so that's one of the another reason to consider getting colored pencils if you're you're thinking about it and I'm using the red pencil here to fill in her fingernail colors building and now getting into the final details of the drawing just filling in her neck strap here for her badge was debating on whether to use a blue or a red for the strap here but I went ahead with the red and it worked out pretty good you don't have to get overly detailed in this part you just want to just enough so that you know what it is And then coloring her little pendant area, her S for Superman, of course. Okay, adding in some more cast shadows and details with the dark brown pencil again. Switching it up to the light sepia color. And at this point, I had already signed it and considered it done, but I noticed that she looked like she was almost missing an arm. So I went ahead and just lightly sketched in a, um, an arm on her left side just to give the impression of, of an arm there. So, And I didn't think it needed to be outlined or anything. But I did want to give it enough detail so that you could tell what it is. So it's all good now all good now adding a little bit of a cast shadow here and we is pretty much done with the drawing here so working out these last details and there you go here is the final drawing. Hope y'all like it. Thank you for watching.